How to get started from scratch in Fusion 360 with dimensioning, sketching, design history, and constraints. Coming up. Hey, this is Tyler Beck with Tech and Espresso. Today we're doing an ultimate beginner guide from scratch, learning Fusion. We're gonna do this simple part. This is a great starting place if you are just brand new to Fusion. So a few things, um, we're gonna build this part and we're gonna base it off of a file that you can find right inside of McMastercar. So insert McMastercar. And then if you wanna search for this particular file, 919-44A205. You search for it, select product detail, and then there it is. You can stretch out your menu if you like. And there's a drawing. We can also download the file if you like. You'll want to hit 3D step file and hit save if you'd like to look at it. But we just need this drawing that we're going to be referencing. All right. So what we'd like to do is I'm going to go up to Fusion and either do file new design or hit this plus sign to start a new design or new file. Great. Okay, so where we're starting is we want to start sketching something and then do a revolve. So if it's all right, I'll do kind of a really quick mock-up. I'll select sketch and I've got these three planes to pick from. Now for the planes, because it's one component, it's not super critical, but I always do the front plane if I don't know, like if I can't think of a better um, option. So we'll do front plane. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a couple lines and I'm not even going to complete it, right? I have a very simple shape. If I wanted to turn this into a solid, I could come up and hit extrude and it's going to extrude it one direction. And that's great, but that's not what I had in mind. What I'd like to do instead is I'm going to come up and finish the sketch, go to my create. Go to create and that's where extrude if i hover these shortcuts and these tool tips pop up to make life a little easier so as i hover over it's explaining each one that revolve looks good because i have a round part think round revolve okay so i'm going to revolve and i need to select the object which is this uh, shape close shape and an axis all right so i'm going to revolve it around that line and all it's really making is a round puck and that's great. That's close to what I had in mind. And I can hit OK. And there it is. Now I'm using some shortcuts. Now let's look at your options real quick. This is a preference. So when we look at our general options, there's this um, style of pan, zoom, and orbit. And if you're used to AutoCAD products or Autodesk, excuse me, you could use Fusion or Inventor. If you're coming from SOLIDWORKS or if you've used SOLIDWORKS in the past, maybe you want to switch to that. But for Fusion, we'll do that for the moment. And the way this works is as I roll the wheel, it zooms in and out. When I hold Shift and press the middle mouse button, it rotates. You can see the view cube up in the corner moving, as well as when I press the middle mouse button down, it's called a pan and it moves it around the screen. All right, so what we just created is a sketch and a revolve. They're found here on the timeline, so it tracks the history of everything you've done. Let's right click on the first thing. That's the sketch. If I right click on the second thing, that's the feature. Now I wanna go back into the sketch. I'm not stuck with the one I did. I'm gonna right click and edit sketch. Great. All right, so let's uh, flip our view around. Go to the front view. So I'm looking straight at it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna introduce a line here. I'm gonna draw a line going up and down. And this is gonna be crazy, get ready for this. I'm gonna turn this into a reference line and I can do that by right clicking and choosing normal construction or construction line. It's now a reference line. And now if we go to our revolve and right click and edit it again, we're gonna do it again. This time, I'm gonna clear these out. I'm gonna revolve this shape and I'm gonna revolve around this axis. So what's it gonna do? It's gonna create a round hole in the middle because there's a gap. So that's looking a lot closer to what I wanted to build 
in that example from McMaster car. So if I bring it over, see, I want a gap or a hole in the middle of that size. And then I want this like taper. Okay, we're getting closer. That's awesome. So let's look at a few other little things to this. If we right click and now start adding smart dimensions, D for smart dimension. The reason that it's called a smart dimension, click on an entity, place it out in space. And when you do this, you are putting a dimension that can drive the shape of everything. It's called parametric design. This is incredible. And as you build more complex shapes, this is so important. Okay, so one thing I forgot to do is my units. I don't wanna work in millimeters. So if I just delete this, I could leave it, that would be fine. But let's go up to our document settings. This is where we change our units. Click on it, you'll see it pops up. You have a default as well. I'm gonna set this to inch. Looks like a millimeter might be my default. Some other things that I like to be sure to set in my preferences for you new users out there. I love this scale entire sketch off first dimension. I think that's very helpful as well as edit dimensions when they're created. That uses that smart dimension tool really well. So I'm gonna dimension this one inch for now, that's fine. And I need a dimension from here to the center, and I need a dimension from the outer to the center line. So there's a really cool trick for that, but let's, let's just do the math really simple since we're just getting started. Okay, so if this is 0.281, okay, so I know that this is 0.281, I guess I could divide it by two. And I actually can do that right in the Fusion dialog there. I type it in and divide by two. I can multiply it by 0.5, I guess, as well. And then let's do the other one. Since we're new, this is a simple way to get this built. 0.5, divide by two. And there we go, great. Okay, so I know that this comes down at an angle. So when I look at the drawing in McMaster car, it doesn't actually give me these values. So a few things are missing. So let's measure from this body and you don't have to go do this, but I'll do it for us. I'll select this flat face and this flat face and that's 0.15625 inches is the distance from the top to bottom. So if we measure also here to here Okay, so now that we have a couple more values, that's gonna make life a little bit easier. D, for smart dimension, place the value 0 0.0625. Place this one. What's that gonna be? 0.15625. Okay, great. So it still moves up and down because it doesn't know its relationship to the origin. Um, this is a really good practice some different ways we can uh, line this up with the origin. If I select the end point here and select this point and say that they are horizontal with each other, it'll line them up. Another way for beginners is you can sketch from point, sketch a line point to point, select it, make it construction, and then again, you could flatten it. So whatever's easier, this is a good practice to have everything defined so nothing will move. Uh, it makes your life a lot easier down the road and you have everything can be edited later. So if I double click, this could be 0.2, right? I love that. Okay, so if we look back at this, there is this flat edge and it's hard to see that. It's not really, it's not called out. The dimension is not called out in the drawing, but the distance is 0 0.0156. Let's go back and let's add that. So I'm going to draw it. Okay. And maybe I could just hit delete and then sketch a line connecting them. And now this, good enough, there we go. So what about this angle? Do we know this angle value? It says it should fit a one quarter inch screw size. So it should be a 45 degree screw that'll fit there. And if I go measure in the old drawing, it is a 45. So how do we do 
a angled dimension. All right, so I'm gonna put a little reference here. We don't have to, but I'm gonna use that as a little reference. I'm gonna place smart dimension, select the horizontal line and this angled line, type in four five for the degree. So I selected two lines and it lets me place an angle. And there's 45. Great, so are we almost done? It looks like we might be. So if we now finish this sketch and let's make sure we're revolving this correctly. I'll go down to the timeline, right click, choose edit feature, and I'm gonna pan over, bring this over, and let's clear these. I'm gonna select for the profile is this shape. The axis is this center line right in the middle. Great, and we're revolving 360 degrees, a new body. If I hit rotate, can see it that looks a lot better that looks like the other one great hit okay and there's our revolve all right so this was a very quick introduction on a simple part for fusion 360 so be sure to hit that subscribe button you'll get notified when my new videos come out i've have got new from scratch content coming as well as more advanced content coming for fusion 360 thanks for watching